This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whomever you are and whatever is happening on your journey of life, it is God who welcomes you here today, and so do we. We are so very, very glad that you are here. Special welcome to anyone who's visiting with us today. We are so happy that you're here, and we hope you can make yourself at home. We do invite everyone who would care to or who needs to to find one of the welcome cards. You'll find those in the front. Is it loud enough? Am I good? It needs to be louder. Thank you. We'll just work that out a little bit. Thank you. Is that better? Okay, good. Okay. We do invite everyone. Ooh, that's really? That's right? Okay. Makes me nervous. <laughs> we do invite everyone who wishes to to find a welcome card. You'll find that in the pew racks in front of you. If you would like to leave your name or your information, if you have any questions, prayer requests, please include that on that form and put it into the offering plate when the offering plate comes around. Those of you who are worshiping with us at home, we're so glad that you're here. We invite you to have some, some wine or bread or crackers or grape juice along so that you can celebrate Holy Communion with us. Oop, too loud. Thank you. That delicate balance. Okay, I think we found it perfect. And we do thank you for your ongoing support for the mission and ministries of St. Mark's. Today we celebrate veterans. We celebrate all who have stri who strive to live and those who have died to protect democracy, to seek freedom and justice. And we also bless the families, those that kept the home fires burning, those who waited and prayed. So today we honor you, and as we honor you, we thought it would be a great idea to have the celebration be an opportunity to uh, pray for and to surround and to bless those who are currently in our lives who are active military. So that will be the emphasis of our Christian education today. We hope that you will enjoy this, and we will pause now for a moment and honor our veterans. Amen. We continue with our mission statement. I invite you to say this loudly and with resound. Shall we say it together? Celebrating God's love and forgiveness, we serve others. And now stand, please, if you would like to, as you are able, as we sing our opening song day by day.
Day by day, your mercies, Lord, attend me, bringing comfort to my anxious soul. Day by day, the blessings, Lord, you send me, draw me nearer to my heavenly goal. Love divine beyond all mortal measure brings to naught the burdens of my quest. Savior, lead me to the home I treasure, where at last I'll find eternal rest. Day by day, I know you will provide me strength to serve and wisdom to obey. I will seek your loving will to guide me o'er the paths I struggle day by day. I will fear no evil of the morrow. I will trust in your enduring grace. Savior, help me bear life's pain and sorrow. Till in glory I behold your face. Oh, what joy to know that you are near me when my burdens grow too great to bear. Oh, what joy to know that you will hear me when I come, O oh Lord, to you in prayer. I did, no matter what betide me, you will hold me ever in your hand. Savior, with your presence here to guide me, I will reach at last the promised land. We invite you to remain standing, if you wish, for the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables. We have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We invite those who are children or children at heart to come forward for the children's message. And I'm going to stay up here with you.
Hi, good morning, everyone. Wonderful Sunday. Glad to see everyone here. Um, today we'll be talking about Daniel, about the truth of all the people will be resurrected and reserved award. Those who have placed their faith are written in the book of life and receive eternal life and will be rewarded as a, just, as a judgment, saint of Christ. Those who reject as only way, God will receive eternal separation from God and be punished according to their sins. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, have a wonderful Sunday. Hope you guys enjoy. If you guys are going, um, I'll be giving you a little bit more details. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful Sunday. Good morning. Today's psalm is psalm number 16. It is a reading and response. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight in the godly that you are in the land upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run off to other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a present land, indeed. I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because God is at my right hand. I shall not shake him. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of light, and in your presence there is fullness of joy, and that in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The reading is from Hebrews chapter 10. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool, footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are sacrificed. And the Holy Spirit testifies to us, for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he has opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our body washed with the pure water. 
Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope and without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. Let us consider how to provoke one to love and do good deeds, for not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see day approaching. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise we invite you to be seated. I recall a conversation I had with a wonderful great aunt of mine. It's the great aunt that, as I spoke to my dad about this, we all argued that we were her favorite. <laughs> you know who I'm speaking of. A wonderful, wonderful faith-filled woman, a woman who spent her whole life as a pastor's wife to a Lutheran pastor, and if she were in our era today, she certainly would have been a pastor herself. So as she was in her 90s, she began to speak more and more about the second coming of Jesus. And she was absolutely positively sure that Jesus was going to come again within her lifetime. And because she was such a woman of strong faith, not just the kind of faith that I strive to have, which is joyful, fun, humorous, and carefree, you know, while being faithful at the same time. It's that beautiful mix, I think, that comes from just from years of being in service to Jesus. But as she spoke about that more and more, the rest of us started to be convinced, maybe this is about to happen, just as, I, as my great aunt Alita would say. And then she died. And we realized what is true, that Jesus did come for her. She had her own second coming. What we have here today is a mini little apocalyptic bit in the Gospel of Mark, a chance for us to look forward and realize that there is yet more to come. But as Jesus makes it abundantly clear in other parts of the Gospel, we do not know the day. And so can we just collectively be okay with that? That we do not know the day that Jesus will finally return. But this we do know that Jesus will continue to come for us individually with the many second, third, fourth, fifth, one thousandths coming in our own lives, time and time and time again. 
We are now in our very last week of the Gospel of Mark. I bet you didn't know it's, it's, it's almost our New Year's Day in the church. That's coming up on the 28th of November, the beginning of Advent. So next week we have this celebration called Christ the King Sunday where we realize that Jesus is absolutely a different kind of king. But this is our last week in the actual text of the Gospel of Mark. It's been quite a whirlwind ride, right? I don't know if you know, if you can recall this, if we've gone through the Gospel of Mark, but if we were to summarize this Gospel, the word is immediately. Jesus went immediately from this to that to this to that. Honestly, not a moment's rest, I'm sorry to say. This is the Gospel for a church on the move, a God who shows up exactly where, it, where he is needed and offers help in the moment. A God who makes decisions and takes care of things on the fly. And we have in this gospel disciples who keep on making mistakes, who have no idea what it means to be the servant of all and who this servant God is. And certainly this is a gospel that shows that following Jesus is sometimes not a smooth ride, but... It is the only way to go. I kind of wonder, after having been here for about one year now and knowing a little bit of St. Mark's history, if St. Mark's is not very aptly named after this gospel. Those of you who are still tired will nod and say it is true, but I will say as we continue to discover who God is that we must be on the right path, right? Even though we can say without a shadow of a doubt it has not been easy. So St. Mark's, congratulations on finishing your year of St. Mark's. Impressive. Because this is not a laid-back gospel. And this, again, is a gospel of disciples who we identify with night and day as not getting it. Always thinking too much of themselves, too little of others, right? Forgetting who God includes and wondering if they get their place secured in the future as their only great need. And Jesus coming along and saying time and time again, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And if you want to follow me, this is what you do. You serve. It's really quite interesting to me that we have this gospel on this Sunday that we're celebrating Veterans Day. And I know this is a day much revered in this congregation as it is in many congregations here in Southern California. We are deeply affected by war. We have loved ones who have served. We have loved ones who have died. We have people here at home who have suffered greatly as they waited for people to return, some who did and some who did not. But the one thing we definitely know about war and its aftermath is that when it's finally declared that we're in peace, there's grief, there's relief, and then there's that great question of what now? How then shall we live? Here we are in, in month 21 of this pandemic where millions of people worldwide have died. And we in the church and in the larger church are also asking that question, how now shall we live? What has changed and how do we need to adapt to continue to follow the one living God? So that's why this text today is incredibly interesting and, and appropriate. This is one of the texts that lets us know clearly that the gospel was written shortly after the time of the destruction of Jerusalem. We talk about that a lot, and no, it isn't named per se in the gospels. You do find hints of it in places like this, but we know for sure that the temple was there and then it wasn't. That Rome showed its show of strength. A nation rose up against a nation and the big one took over the little one. And after this point, the priestly worship was gone. The temple mount was no more. And many, many people lost their lives. So I think as people were reading the Gospel of Mark, as it came to the people and they were seeing this, they knew that this was a Jesus, a God who understood what it's like to live through tragedy and to ask that question, what now? For those of you who have lived through war, you might know what it's like to live in the rubble. 
I know we have people here from all parts of the world. I think that this would be akin to someone after the war who lives in Germany or Japan or perhaps the Philippines, I don't know. But for sure, what do we do now as we look around and everything we thought was secure and safe, what we'd been told since we were children was the place to go and worship and the proper way to worship God, all of that is now in question. That's what we have here in this gospel. And my friends, we can say with absolute confidence and absolute assurance that no matter what happens in our life, to the buildings, to the institutions, to the nations, whatever it may be that we put our, our faith so strongly in, it will not matter if we have Jesus. This is what this gospel is telling us. Nothing compares to Jesus. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of our own we claim, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. This is our firm foundation. This is why we are here. This is why we can stand firm no matter what happens in our lives. I think we forget, I forget every aspect that God wants to be involved in in our lives. God wants to be involved in our politics. God wants to be involved in our families. God wants to be involved in our marriages, in our relationship with our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren. God wants to be involved in our finances. God wants to be involved in our day-to-day -day living. God wants to be God of all areas of our life. And when God is God, this living God, this dynamic God, this fresh new God comes in and shows us the way. And upon this, our hope is founded. Nothing more, nothing less. Just Jesus. The reading from Hebrews today. Thank you, Bob, for reading that for us. The reading from Hebrews today. If I were to summarize that in one word, that word is assurance. My friends, you can know that you are saved. You can know that God has you here in this life and firmly has you in the next. You can know without a shadow of a doubt that when you face any kind of difficulty, God has a solution for you. It might require humility and it might require patience, but the answer is going to come because our God is faithful. So I read to you again from the book of Hebrews, and please take this to heart. Meditate on these words. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their hearts. I will write it on their minds. I will remember their sins no more or their lawless deeds no more. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. He who has promised is faithful. Whatever is going on in our lives today, the faithful one is with you. Whatever seems unresolved, the faithful one has an answer for you, for us. And as we follow Jesus, we expect more of the bumpy ride. <laughs> we expect a lot of needing to ask for forgiveness and hopefully receiving forgiveness. But all the while, we are following the one true living God, the only authority that we claim here at St. Mark's Lutheran Church.
So now as we are in this state and in this new place, we ask, how then shall we live? Again, the book of Hebrews gives us a clue. Let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. These are our marching orders, provoking one another to love and good deeds. And today we do honor, we remember, we hold fast in our hearts those who live and those who died for freedom, democracy, and justice through their dedication. But we also realize the terrible consequences of war. And we know that war is not the ideal that God would have us live in, but a reality at times of our fallen world. Today, we also pray for healing and for peace for all who have suffered the consequences of one nation rising against another nation of one people group dehumanizing another people group. And once again, we the followers of Christ, we the children of God, acknowledge our desperate need for a savior. We cling to our need for forgiveness and this assurance that when we confess our sins, our sins are forgiven. And then our response will be simple we will work toward love and good works. Not so that we can gain our way of favor, not to appease our guilt, no. We do that because we fully accept that God loves us and wants us to live in freedom and forgiveness and new life. We acknowledge that Jesus has the ability to absorb all the pain, all the sorrow, all the mistakes that we humans bring upon ourselves. It sounds too good to be true, but it is true. And at the end of the day, at the end of your strength, at the end of your ability to understand, at the end of your rope, the answer is, was and always will be Jesus. We invite you to stand as you would like to as we sing together the old tried and true hymn full of faith of our ancestors, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Right. 
Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, alone, redeemed to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. We invite you to be seated. Please join me in the prayers of intercession. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our ruler, you write the law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all the elected leaders and officials to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. We pray especially for Lutheran social services that they continue to help many and those they reach may be blessed. God in your mercy. God, our stronghold, you are present amid disaster. We pray for all those affected by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, floods, hurricanes, and wildflowers, and the first responders who support them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. God, in your mercy. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of Christ. God, in your mercy. God of healing, we give you thanks for health care workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and those for, who long for healing in any way, especially Bob Engelbretson's son, Todd, Carol Cartwright, Karen Bunch, Helene Griswold and her daughter, Angie, Dorothy G and her cousin, Ronnie, Marjorie and Martha B, Ruby H, Tom and Patty Z, Marilyn T, Devin D, June R, Rosie R, Susan K, Ruby H, Manuel, Stephen, and Chris. God in your mercy. God our Savior, today we honor our veterans worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country. We pray that you will bless them, Lord, for their unselfish service, bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced and for the sacrifices they made. We pray especially for those service people from our St. Mark's family, Daniel Joseph Alcana, Domingo Diaz, Alan Damian, Roberto Arcer, Francisco Rivera, and Lisa and Bruce Mansfield. Lord, in your mercy, we respect them, we thank them, we honor them, we are proud of them, and we pray that you will watch over these people and bless them with peace and happiness. 
We pray for peace in this beautiful world. Other prayers may be offered at this time, either out loud or silently in your heart. God, in your mercy. God, our hope and strength we entrust to you for all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. God is so good. God is so Today we pray for Devin, for guidance and wisdom for medical teams and for healing. And we pray for those that we, the names we have now for those who are active military. We pray for Daniel. We pray for Domingo. We pray for Alan. We pray for Roberto. We pray for Francisco. We pray for Rosie, for strength and for comfort in her time of grief. And for June also, for strength and comfort in a time of grief. And we pray for Marilyn, for your guidance and your wisdom, for healing and strength in a time of difficult health problems. For these and for others, Lord, that we will pray for later, we ask that you will guide them, protect them, comfort them, and be present with them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God is so good, God is so good. God is so good, is so good to me. The peace of Christ be with you always. We invite you to turn around and share a sign of God's peace with those around you. Those of you who are worshiping with us at home, we invite you to share the peace of Christ with those around you, or you may also... Uh, Write your piece in the comments below. It's always fun to see. And we, um, or raise your hand in the direction of anyone you know needs God's peace and simply bless them. It's all good. Thank you so much. Well, our Thanksgiving moment, I didn't think I coordinated this right. Um, we, do you have the, f you, the Thanksgiving moment? You don't happen to have the, the, Okay, we'll get that next time. Today we're going to give thanks for our vets. That's what we're going to do, our veterans. And so we give you thanks. And you will enjoy very much our, um, um, the reception that has been prepared. We look forward to enjoying that with you. So again, let's take a moment and give applause to our veterans and those who have served our nation. We thank you for your ongoing support for the mission and ministries of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. You, of course, may bring your offering in, send it into our office. You may use our Venmo, which is at St. Mark's Church Chula Vista. That's quite a tongue twister. Or you may uh, work this out with your uh, bank to give electronically. Any way you do this, we give you thanks for partnering in mission with us as we serve and follow Jesus.
that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, and yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We invite you to stand as you would like for the great Thanksgiving and the celebration of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. It is truly right and proper at all times and places to give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father Almighty, ever-living God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. For the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We invite you now, if you haven't already, to open up the little cup. If you did not receive a little cup for communion, just raise your hand and the communion assistants will bring them to you. If you are at home, we invite you to commune um, each other. Or if you maybe commune with us with these words, the body of Christ is given for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. You may be seated. You may be seated. Who takes away the sin of the world? Have mercy on us. Christ, O Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world? Give us your peace. 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have put before us both host, you've been both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when we all feast together in your heavenly banquet. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, we're on. Oh, my goodness, hello. <laughs> All right, a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, Angel Tree starts next week. For those of you who are not familiar with our tradition with Angel Tree, um, we have received the names of 20 children in the South Bay who have a parent in prison. And one, uh, what we do is we uh, take names off the Angel Tree. It's next Sunday or the Sunday after. You pick a name off the Angel Tree and the card tells you the name of the child, the age of the child, and then what their preference would be. They have already been asked, would they like a particular piece of clothing or a particular toy, or at least their parent has been asked, um, and guardian has been asked, what would they would like? So when the request is on there, we encourage you to um, purchase as described on the Angel Tree card. When you purchase it, you have two weeks to return it. Actually, we'll be returning it on um, December 5th, bring it back to church on Sunday morning, we'll package them up and make sure they get, uh, that we either deliver them or you can pick up the packages to deliver yourself to that family. Uh, some families have more than one child, so if you chose to deliver to a particular family and they have more than one child, after the service we'll give you the bags that go to that family. Each child's um, toys and clothing are packed in one bag. So that's coming up. Uh, make sure you're watching for that next week or the following Sunday. Uh, we will organize those and deliver the packages before Christmas. If you um, would like to help deliver, we certainly could use some volunteers to help deliver. Member care meeting is Monday afternoon, and member care, or, I'm sorry, Monday, November 29th. Member care means those are people who intentionally um, pay attention to who hasn't been in church, who's as, at, caught at home uh, for one reason or another, and they are part of the care team that makes sure that their needs are met, give them calls, make sure that they know that someone is caring about them and paying attention. So if you'd like to be part of the member care team, that is open to anyone Monday, November 29th. We're still looking for a nursery attendant, so please, uh, if you know anyone who is bilingual and CPR first aid trained or would be willing to do so, we need a nursery attendant for Sunday morning. Uh, this Sunday, we're monitoring our military, and I lost, I lost who's doing it. Uh, Mari, Mari uh, Lizaraga, I'm sorry, I blanked on names. Uh, Mari Lizaraga has arranged for um, care kits to be built in Jacobson Hall, as we did for the homeless a couple of months ago, or homeless and hungry. Um, we will have care packages 
uh, for you to help assemble and write notes for in Jacobson Hall this morning after coffee. Um, Thrivent Financial, um, do we, is just that person here? Did you see? Ah, there's the Thrivent Financial uh, agent, or whatever we call her, representative. Uh, she will be at Jacobson Hall also to answer questions about grants or to help you understand how you can best support St. Mark's uh, through your Thrivent um, donations. I noticed one of the things that is down a little this year is our Thrivent, what's that called? Choice dollars. Um, everyone, everyone who owns a Thrivent product um, has choice dollars that you can determine where it goes. And I noticed in this month's uh, don uh, financial statements that our choice dollar donations are down. So please check that out if you don't know how to do that. Um, please see our uh, Thrivent representative. Monday evening is council meeting. It's available to you on Zoom if you'd like to join us. Um, please uh, let me know you're planning to attend or put your name in it if you call in uh, so I know who it is that we're talking to. I don't want someone just tuning in um, who uh, might want wish us harm. <laughs> so make sure you let us know if you're going to be participating. Um, we will be live downstairs if you'd prefer to join in person. And next Sunday, Saturday, I'm sorry, is our amazing organ fundraiser with Jason and Margaret Galliard. Uh, they have been practicing. We have um, a variety of musicians. Uh, Jason has, a, including uh, Angie Lightfoot Malden, uh, it, Mulder, if you'd like uh, to come and have an amazing hour between two and three, there are a group of us who are also doing a reception afterwards. If you'd like to help participate in that or just come and have coffee or lemonade and a snack and um, just visit. You're welcome to do that. So please enjoy. Um, bring your friends and neighbors. There are flyers in the narthex for you. And next Sunday, um, Myrna Bolin. Will you wave, Myrna? One of our esteemed members, our longtime members of St. Mark's, Myrna is going to share her story. Um, one of the things that happened in funerals over the years, people have said, well, I didn't know that about that person. I, I would have had a conversation. We share a similar background, or I really wish I'd known that before they were gone. So we've started stories of our lives so that we can meet and learn more about people than we know about them in just on Sunday morning. And if we haven't had extended conversations, we don't know what amazing things people have done or how their lives have gone or where they were born and things that really build connections. So next week, we honor Myrna and get her a chance, give her a chance to tell her story. Um, so the final statement this morning, please make sure you tie prayers into prayer quilts on your way out. And I give this back to Pastor Carla now. Excited to welcome more into our new members. We had a family that was unable to be with us for new members um, day, so we invite the Mansfield family to come forward. And we have two things that we were unable to experience and celebrate with you, so we're going to combine it all in one. And you all have parts of this, so remember, keep looking up there for what you're supposed to say. Welcome, welcome. Am I on the camera? Are we on the camera? Okay, great. Okay. Why don't? Yeah. I think this is the best I can do. Okay. Okay. Welcome. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and, sh and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. My sisters and brother, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people here in this place? If so, please respond, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Excellent. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? If so, please answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Welcome there. Let us welcome these sisters and brother in Christ. And Bruce is unable to be here today, partially because of working on his doctorate, which is part of his active military duty. So we honor Bruce Mansfield today as well in absentia and welcome him as a member in absentia. We welcome the sisters and brothers in Christ into this community of faith. Let us say the next line together. Here we go, everyone. We rejoice with you in your life of baptism 
Together we give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'd like to, the entire Mansfield family, so we have Lori right here, and Mom Lisa, who also is our bell choir, a courageous bell choir leader, and Michael, who's also active with us in bells and then also in confirmation, then Bruce, who is, is um, he, um, busy right now, very busy. Everyone's busy in this family. Okay. Because they're here, we're going to go ahead and do the other part that we were unable to celebrate with them. So these are Bibles for you, um, Lori, and for Michael in your uh, confirmation years and beyond. It's a Lutheran study Bible. It's an excellent text. It's very, very helpful, and I know that um, as James works with you in confirmation, he'll be referring to this. And so what we do is um, you picked it up perfect, and you put the Bible in the hands of your children because we are here to support you as the primary teacher of the faith and to help you put Holy Scripture into your children's hands. And as uh, Michael and Lori have received their Bibles, let's go to the next screen. Let us say this together as a congregation. Receive this Bible. Hear God's word with us. Learn and tell its stories, discover its mysteries, honor its commandments, rejoice in its good news. May God's life-giving word inspire you and make you wise. So for all that, let us give thanks to God. And don't be surprised if people want to snap your picture afterwards. Okay, great. Let's see invite you to stand as you are able for the blessing, for the sending song, excuse me. Lord, we have your peace. Lord, we have your peace. Just as you said, we've heard it. Just as you lived, we have felt it. Lord, we have your peace. Sustain us in your peace, O oh Lord, as we go to our separate worlds. Keep this peace with us as we try to love in our troubled world. Send us forth in peace, send us forth in peace, to be a light, to show your beauty forever. Go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Hey there.